Hello all, this is the third lecture of Agile Development. In the previous lecture, we were on Agile Process Models. We have already covered Extreme Programming and Industrial Extreme Programming, which was a variant of the previous one. Today we are going to see Adaptive Software Development Process Model, ASD as well as Dynamic Systems Development Model Process Models, DSD. Okay, now Adaptive Software Development Process Model, ASD, is again an agile approach to developing softwares. This particular software is divided into three different phases. The main use of this model is to build complex softwares using an iterative approach means it is moving into cycles so every iterative approach or every iterative uh, direction is a cycle and the main focus of this uh, model is collaborating teams working together in a healthy environment now we'll move on to the phases of adaptive software development. It consists of three different phases. You can see in the speculation phase, there is an adaptive cycle planning. This adaptive cycle planning is named adaptive because the cycle is supposed to be changing invariably. That is what agile model is for. That is why if requirements are changing, your cycle has to change based on that. That is why the cycle isn't fixed. It is a adaptive cycle. Next is the speculation phase is also called the initial project, project initiation phase where they are making an adaptive cycle plan. In the adaptive cycle plan, they are including four basic things. First is in the plan, they will keep in mind what is the customer's mission or the customer's statement or his purpose of creating this software. Second, they are going to keep in mind the project constraints. Means in what time they have to develop, what budget they have, what are their requirements in hand, what is the skill that the development team is having. In these constraints, they are going to develop the software next thing is they are going to basic requirements they are going to collect and based on that they will fix a delivery date and they will set a budget for this particular project next is they are going to find out what is the release plan they will make a release plan that the, uh, it should be weekly or it should be monthly it should be 15 days that will be decided based on the schedule of development. When they are going to develop what feature, when they are going to code, when they are going to test. Based on that, a schedule is prepared and this schedule will help to make a release plan. Next is uh, the basic requirement in this speculation phase is this cycle is adjusted every time so as a customer when you are discussing with the development team you come and find some changes happening in the project then customer's mission statement may change due to that he may be offering a little more budget he may be ready to extend the delivery date so all the things that are in the adaptive cycle planning may change as per requirements next we will move on to the collaboration phase the collaboration phase is a phase in which there are multiple talents among the members of the team which they need to teach each other in order to move forward towards a successful high quality product collaboration emphasizes on individualism because individual creativity plays an important role in collaborative thinking. The main focus of this phase is on JAD, that is 
joint application development also on requirement gathering by talking to the customer and also discussing the mini specs that is you have to specify every minute details in the project inside this collaboration there should be some qualities in the asd team the asd team should assist each other without any jealousy feelings or without any bad motives they should completely trust each other and they should work very hard towards achieving their targets they should possess all the required skills be it technical or be it agile skills they should communicate with each other and help each other in timing of crisis or under pressure they should criticize without any enmity feelings between each other so that they it could lead to continuous improvement in their overall process the last phase of asd is the learning phase in the learning phase there are various skills and techniques that they need to develop the organization emphasizes on learning and they also give incentives to the all the team members who emphasize on learning new technology and new skills there are basically three ways of learning the first way is taking a feedback from the end users or focus groups due to this the learning can improve because you can come to know more about the requirements and a crystal clear view of what should be delivered a formal technical review is done for a better quality a technical review is nothing but retrospection or documentation of your project work this is given to the higher authorities for audit and based on that you are given reviews for improving your work last and not the least four post mortems are conducted where every team will analyze their own performance they will judge each other they will help communicate what are the problems they will work hard and they will do appropriate improvements which are needed and finally the software will be released okay so finally we can see whatever happening in the asd process is speculation where you are having an adaptive cycle and discussing all the statements constraints requirements and release plan after deciding this there is a collaboration in the team where all are doing the requirement gathering doing a joint application development process by discussing each and every minute detail after that comes the learning phase where they are taking customer feedbacks reviews and post mortems based on that if they find there are any changes the whole cycle will go on again and again and after doing that they will release the software to the client this delivered software will be better in quality so this was what was asd about we will now move on to dynamic system development process model this is also an agile approach to developing softwares this process is used when your project has to be delivered in a very short time limit so this is actually a framework for building and maintaining systems which meet tight timelines and you cannot you cannot just have uh, extend your timeline for delivering the product so how do you deal with such type of projects which have a strict time schedule you need to develop them using an incremental model as well as using a prototype so finally you can conclude that the sdm model can be used where you have time constraints and along with that you have to deliver the software quick high quality so you are using some 
incremental and prototyping approach so that you go reach to the bar. So this uh, model consists of five different phases. The first phase is the feasibility phase. In the feasibility phase, there is a basic business requirement discussion and constraints are discussed. What they are discussing is the viability of the project, whether it is feasible. So here they are going to discuss whether the money constraint is there or time constraints or technical skills of the team. Uh, under all this, will they be able to deliver this project? Will they be able to make this project? Next is the business study. The business study is establishing the form foundation of functional and information requirements from the client. They are also helping in determining its business value or market value. If the software that they are developing is not of use in the market, then there is no use making it because it will be a loss for the customer as well as the developer or the developing organization. Next is the functional model iteration. The functional model iteration is going to prepare incremental prototypes which demonstrate functionality to customers. Now doing this means you are developing a rough working system each time you are releasing an increment. Each and every increment will have a rough prototype due to which the customer will get a complete idea as to what is going to be delivered to them in that increment. So he can make any further changes before the product is delivered to him. So this way the client will be sure whether the product that he is getting is actually what he wants or it still requires some modifications. Next is the design and build iteration. The design and build iteration is nothing but uh, it encourages parallelism in design and building activities. It also tells you and re it also revisits the prototypes during the functional model iteration and ensures that they have been engineered in a manner that it can be operational and it can be of value to the end user. These are generally the functional models. And last step is the implementation step. During the implementation step, the software that is made in an increment, which is an operationalized software, is deployed or placed in the working environment. The further changes which are requested could be there from the client side to the developers after this deployment. So, during, after the implementation phase, the team should be ready for any further changes and incorporate them in the next increment. So after the anal thorough analysis of both ASD and DSDM, we can say that both are having some incremental sort of feature that they are developing the programs, the software in an incremental method. Incremental suggesting they have to use incremental because they are going to have requirement changes. And due to these requirement changes, the whole plan has to be changed. So in order to incorporate the newly coming features, newly coming requirements from the client side, which are as per the latest market, we need to help them out in incorporating all that in the software. So ASD is used for as an adaptive cycle planning. Whereas DSDM is used as a incremental plus prototyping feature, which is not present in this. Here you don't have prototypes, but here you have prototypes. That's all for today's lecture. Thank you.